Discover new mind and body hacks to thrive as a human today. The Institute for Aliveness is here to teach you all the things you never learned in school. From talking poop, sex, childhood trauma, emotional intelligence, psychedelics, and of course, fasting and food. This is a podcast that changes lives. Join your host, Dr. Andrea Page, as she travels seven continents to find the most captivating, impactful humans for you. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to welcome you to a new season of the podcast. This season, I bring you some of the most important embodied people in my life. From all over the world, people I've met along my journey, I thought, hey, why not share them with the world? Oh, my goodness. This must be one of my favorite episodes yet. I am so deeply honored to bring all of you, uh, one of my greatest friends, family, uh, that closeness that could never be described in an adjective. Um, B is an elder and yet such a young soul. And uh, he's one of the people who I can just be with because we both fully can live in the time that is timeless and um, and play with life endlessly and so that definitely comes out in this interview um, as does so much information about Oroville the intentional community that was my place of rebirth uh, and it's where he has spent um, almost 50 years of his life and uh, it is also a great little download on zero waste philosophy and he gets into talking about his house which is entirely made of waste it's a gorgeous house we call the trash mahal and we have lots of little asides on um, a very uh, grounded version of spirituality but like how to show up every day with an open heart and no fear and no self-doubt and um, there, there's just nuggets of wisdom woven into all parts of this interview. So I hope that you enjoy it. And yeah, let me know how it goes. I know that each and every one of you will want to go to Oroville after this. Good. <laughs> So now I am, it's late night in Los Angeles and I am in the suburbs of Santa Monica, if you can call it that. And I'm sitting in my friend's car where it's nice and warm and lovely and comfortable. And you are in India. Yes. And we are going to talk about whatever comes, whatever comes up and all of the truths and the non-truths of life and everything in between. (laughs) Wonderful. That's what we always talk about. I know. (laughs) I know, but now (laughs) we're going to talk about it and then share it with other people. (laughs) That's uh, wonderful. Wonderful. (laughs) But I I have big plans for you, though. I have big plans for you. (laughs) You have plans for me? Yeah. Not right (laughs) away. Not right (laughs) away. You're, You're still in training. (laughs) <laughs> but, uh, okay. <laughs> after a full, after a few more years, you have to go on the world stage, my dear. What and, does that uh, mean? Do I get to tap that dance? Means, that means like uh, you have to take on the roles of these people who will all be, uh, who have died or are dying, or you know, people like the Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, all these people, and you know, they they did what they could, but you have to universalize it all. And uh, Eckhart Tolle wrote his nice books and everything, but you, you, you're, you're living it, you see, and the living nutrition and the, all of this stuff that you know and are learning and are sharing, it has to take a, a kind of a leap into the mass consciousness, and, and you're the one chosen by the gods. <laughs> Does that make you the god, V? <laughs> no, no, they told me. They told me. <laughs> you are them. See, in 16 years, also, I'm going to die. So then yeah, I'm we know. We know help. that date. Yeah, I'm going to help you. So, okay, so after that, I you're going to help me? I myself also. Okay. Okay. We have, Very good. we have to open the channel. I'm glad we still have 16 years. Yeah, so am I. It's a lot of, you know, it, it'll go by fast, but it's still fun. <laughs> so 
So, okay, I accept. I accept. But I would rather oh. it be faceless. I would rather it not be me. I would rather it be me through the filter of an artificial intelligence unit and or more like the woman behind the curtain thing. Well, you can be the Wizard of Oz. You can still do that part. <laughs> you, you can be the wonderful wizard behind this machine. <clears throat> but you will okay. be an enlightened one. It's all right. The AI mm. and the intelligence is going <laughs> to, you know... <laughs> Sort of, you know, it's, it's going to it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so this stuff is coming on fast. Already with my brother, I was in my brother's house. You know, he's got this AI on the floor. He's got he calls her Hazel. She cleans the house. <laughs> <every day. laughs> the vacuum. <laughs> it's a it's an AI. It's no more vacuum. I mean it's. <laughs> It, yeah, it maps the neural network of, of the floor plan of the house, learns it, and knows what to avoid, right? Exactly, exactly. And mm. does all the work quietly, efficiently, every mm. day. Yeah, mm. and, yeah, and he can, you know, drink beer and watch it. <laughs> it becomes simultaneously entertainment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good, but, very but good. See, but the, the AI is ready, but he's not, see? He mm. voted for So <laughs> there are still people like that out there. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they need uh, a little more, uh, how should we call it, education. Yeah, I mean, everyone has their own motives and their own tax brackets, exactly. and we're all here to just play our, 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 pro, our, our role in the cycles of samskara. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So I want to I want to give context for our relationship and um you know as much as as context as you can give to cosmic nature but um yeah. and I want to ground people into the conversation through through you as well and the unconventional and grounded path that you've led. It's 11.30. And it's 11.30 in Oroville, yeah, that lady off the computer. I'll turn her off. Uh, maybe <laughs> I, I don't know if I can turn her off because then that would No, don't turn her off. off. We want her as part okay. of the conversation. <laughs> Every half an hour, she will tell us where we are. Very good. I remember her. You've had her on for years. So Yeah, I know. I love her. I love her. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's, she's very sweet and faithful. <laughs> See, that's this is the precursor to the operating system. If anyone hasn't yeah. seen the movie Her, it's a man who falls in love with his operating system, with his OS, because it it's that sweetness, that faithfulness, that consistency, and that like the the, the deep loyal monogamy. Or yeah, the way so. the man wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's happening, right? In Korea and Japan, there are, there are girlfriends in the boxes and all of it. All of it. <laughs> so, okay. So I have been, in this lifetime at least, blessed to know B in, in physical form since, I believe it was 2010, it must have been, or 2011. When did you come back to Oroville from California? Nine. 2009. Okay. Yeah. So... The, okay, so the beginning of 2009 was my first time in Oroville. Um, the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, when the Dalai Lama came, we made a grand entrance at the same time. And then, of course, I was um, in this intentional community in the south of India, based on human unity, one of the longest running intentional communities in the world. It's an international community uh, that is nearly half or more than half Indian, and then the rest from so many different countries um and i i went in at the age of 20 as a hard-headed political economist uh who at the beginning of the semester was arguing with my advisor about how i and the subjective nature does not belong in an academic paper it was a very very northern california inspired program and by the end of the semester there i was holding crystals doing my self evaluation for the grades and crying 
and like doing deep processing work and that was my spiritual awakening it had this nice little package and it was a bookended experience of six months of my very first time in India and I was already a yoga teacher then and yet I had no idea what yoga really was until I went to India and um, I think I must have heard about you then B, but you weren't there during my living roots semester uh, it wasn't until no, after I... that that you'd come back Yes. And then yes. we must have met, I guess, at the International House or somewhere, somewhere yeah. there. And it, yeah. Yeah. And it was it was just instant recognition. And and since then, in this lifetime, at least, B is one of my dearest, best friends. And there's just joy and nothing but joy to be held and tremendous amounts of gratitude. And. Hmm. So I, I'm going to ask, and normally my first opening question with anyone I bring on is um, for you to tell the story of your becoming, but I want to start at the end and then hop back to the beginning. So if you would be willing to um, introduce yourself in terms of what your life looks like now, and then we'll back up to how you got there. Sure, can do that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let's see, my life now. You see, I'm I'm really invested in this now stuff because the now is <laughs> also not the past <laughs> or the future. It, it is happening. It is just happening here with you, Andy, and. Uh, <laughs> all the wonderful things you say but I, I always have a little um, reservation about all the words we use and all the terminology to try to get behind all of this mm. and since uh, right now where I am is trying a bit to have some detachment if you want to call it that or some overview uh, some more witness uh, what's happening, happening to myself and happening around me. And I know it's all happening inside. I'm a filmmaker, so I'm always making this film and analyzing the film, but then uh, <laughs> trying to extend it. So right now, practically, how do you describe that or how, how do you talk about that? It just in the terms of the things that I'm doing, one of the, the huge things for me is this concept of the, the abundance that we have and the beauty and prosperity of the earth, that we are somehow not taking care of. We're not taking care of ourselves and our people, and our earth and our insects and all of it. The consciousness is still fractured in a way that, uh, you know, a lot of unhappy things are happening. So to get around, uh, to get in with that and shift that consciousness, uh, zero waste has become a, a big mantra for me. Uh, and I, I've been inspired by many people around the world who are doing things, and right at the moment, we're working on a project of feces standard money, which <laughs> uh, is, is an incredible, brilliant insight of this Korean professor, Professor Cho, at the Science Walden Institute in Korea, and uh, he invented a toilet in which uh, when you poop in the toilet, you get your credit on your phone in global currency because you have made a huge contribution of something very valuable, your poop, which is turned into compost and methane. That Just that alone equalizes everybody on the planet. So every human being, you know, is pooping. So mm -hmm. it's the end of uh, racism, 
and gender problems and age and all of that kind of stuff is gone because we're all human and we're all doing this act and that act is a sacred valuable act which has been very much discredited in cultures uh, wow. through taboos and all the rest so to take that and make that the standard of value was a brilliant uh, idea I felt and a brilliant insight that opened up a lot of other things which now he's into universal basic income for everybody on the planet based so the on the poo currency <laughs> yeah based on the poo currency exactly but not just poo currency see because that high tech toilet not everybody can have it but everybody mm. can get credits and we're going to use underutilized capital underutilized capital is all over the place it's all the edible food that's growing in your garden that you pull up and compost. It's, it's uh, what every production unit has left over and is either trashing or giving away or wasting. So all of these resources can be put in a pool in which you can access, because we have the technology now with our phone app, you can access it locally and globally. And mm -hmm. so to get together a project and so I'm going to a meeting tomorrow with some young people in Oroville and we have a whole plan to get a core together and actually do this in Oroville so mm. that's a that's a big thing that you know I'm into and of course Saturday is world cleanup day so we've mm. got a huge effort rolling here to not only clean up the world but of course clean up our local situation and we have this uh, eco-service, we call it, where all the waste, so-called waste, is, is uh, collected. And they just got a new machine there, which is such a wonderful machine that I had talked about for years. And finally, they got it. It's a, just a huge hydraulic press. So any dry so-called waste or trash you can throw in, this huge press comes down and it crunches it. And then you mm. lift it up, put more in, more in, until you get a bale. You get a big block of, uh, you know, your chips packets and your candy wrappers and everything all crunched into this bale, which is about two foot square. And mm. that bale, there you have the solution to housing. Because mm -hmm. that bale it lasts longer than concrete. No termite wow. deleted. It's, uh, you know, uh, the insulation properties are fantastic. It has, it has it's lightweight, waterproof, all of that. It's everything you want in a building material. So mm. bricks and concrete, all that stuff we don't need anymore because we have so much of this waste. And what were they doing with that? Dumping it in landfill, mm -hmm. polluting the water. So all the styrofoam in there, you know, is crumbling down and going down into the water. You drink it, it's poison. So we, so that whole movement, which is, of course, happening worldwide, uh, is something that I want to focus on locally here. And, of course, I have my house. My house mm -hmm. is a constant. The trash mahal. <laughs> trash mahal. <laughs> So that how you know this house I'm sitting in it every day you know and I'm marveling at the fact that uh, it happened I said you could mm. build a house out of anything and so I just did it and and people laughed at it they they uh, even had trouble with the uh, housing service I had trouble with the um, town planners you know oh you can't live in garbage it's toxic and blah blah all these uh, ignorant myths that people live with about uh, so-called waste. I mean, nothing is waste until you waste it. And uh, <laughs> until you put it into a condition where you can't use it because mm. it's all contaminated by different things mixed together and too much labor to undo it. And so you have that, uh, you have that phenomenon of the Tetra Pak, that super engineering marvel you know, where you can transport liquids all over the planet in a little light packet that's almost indestructible, waterproof, everything, except it doesn't biodegrade. Mm -hmm. What can you do with it? It's going into landfill to last for thousands of years. So fortunately, 
this wonderful guy in uh, India figured out a way just to grind them up, heat them up, and compress them into roof sheets. That is an ideal thing. So, of course, we built a whole dormitory out of them, and I used them in my house. So these kind of things, uh, processes, that take into account the technology that we have and that we can use to create heaven on earth. I mean, that's what we're here to do. And uh, it's possible, <laughs> so possible, with a little shift in consciousness. So that's, you know, I mean, I would say that's where I am right now. And uh, how did I get here? Well, wait, wait, my... wait. Wait. What? <laughs> by, by foot. <laughs> wait, I want to interject before we get to the how do we get here story, if I may. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so... <laughs> The, I mean, there's so much meta processing that, that I'm finding I want to do with all of this because the cycle yeah. of life has been broken, right? And that's, that's symbolified by the bees flying away. Or that's symbolified by the great amounts of depression that people are in. Or that's symbolified by the opioid crisis, right? I'm here in the States where I don't spend much time. And the fact that this cycle has been broken means that the answer is closing the cycle. And this is the cycle of life, as well as the, the water cycle, as well as the compost cycle of how something falls from a tree, it decomposes, it gives back to the earth, or we poop and it gives back to the earth and it regenerates into a plant once again and life comes back. This is the cycle of death and rebirth of karma and reincarnation. And it, it, it is this cyclical process from which we've detracted our, our reality and we think that everything is uh, permanent in a way. We are attached to, the, to the, the permanence of be it our loved ones or be it our house or our material possessions or our Instagram feed or our reputation or our bank account and yet truthfully the only thing that's permanent is impermanent itself impermanence itself and so um, being able to step back into flow for want of a better word for the hyped up flow state but that that cyclical flow of the life cycle and realizing that waste that Julia Butterfly Hill, when you throw something away, where is a way? There is no a way. And allowing ourselves to embrace a, a, a zero waste or a leave no trace principle, right? I've just come back from, from Burning Woman, as you lovingly call it. Uh, <laughs> that is the largest leave no trace event in the world. And that ethos of being able to commit to that number one and then number two to think about every action you take and how much trash you actually make like there's this this lovely girl in new york city who collects all her trash and, and lives that zero waste lifestyle but then going that step further where you're also incorporating your poop and maybe even the hair that falls out of your head or the dust that's in your house um, or whatever else it might be and um, looking at all these blind spots of like the waste that's produced from the food at a restaurant that you go to or the clothing that you buy. Um, like many, many people who have been in, in my retreats or things like that might have heard that that I went for eight years without buying any new item of clothing, swath, hemp or bamboo. But uh, I still to this day pretty much only wear thrift store stuff like the clothes I'm wearing right now these pants are from a thrift store in Prague. This shirt is from a thrift store in Paris. And this other shirt was my grandmother's. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's when you allow your life to be lived in a non-conventional way that makes more sense, that's when the consciousness opens. That's exactly. when we get back into flow state. That's when we say yes. Yep. And we no longer create karma, but we are living in the flow of dharma of right action and and so it's it's this this bigger thing it's not this invite and this is for listeners right of course it's not for you b but it's not this environmental <laughs> like <laughs> it's not this environmental like zero waste it's not a principle-based thing it's not the earth as an externalization of you it's not a martyrdom of we need to save the earth it's not any of that. It's us, each of us embracing how we live. And rather than being outside of this cyclical flow that is what we call life, 
stepping into it and flowing with it. And that is from where happiness comes. That is from where fulfillment comes. That is from where the antidote to most maladies come. And so like, that's a little bit of the bigger, the bigger picture for me of what's going on and the all of the magical technologies that are coming from tech tech tetra pack roofs to these large trash blocks that we're building with to like any other waste principle be it the poo coin or be it um the like simple version of bottles filled with waste and then used to like build a plastic coca-cola bottle trash filled building um or or like a gorgeous upcycle which is of course become a thing in the art world um version of that which is the the trash mahal your home this wonderful castle that you've built that is gorgeous and i'll have to post photos um for for everyone to see but like you would never think that it's quote unquote a trash home because it's not <laughs> a, a pile of rubble it's been well designed that design is a feature that doesn't need or necessitate new items or custom produced items that when you often use misfit items you have to strategize with artistry to make it beautiful and that's what at the end of the day, makes it a, a signature piece or a signature home. So thank you for leaving your signature. So well said. So well said. And I, I hope that that kind of lands the, the zero waste philosophy for everyone um, a little more deeply into the just, yeah, just the general greater view of, of who are we? What is humanity? What is life? What are we doing here? And the cosmic nature of it all, because I think the environmentalist movement has been largely understood because it has not been based on a shifting consciousness. Um, right. And then secondarily, it makes me really curious of of if this is indeed your last incarnation, because you are no, you are no waste at the end. Does that mean that there will be no more karma for you to be reborn? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's play. You see, we we have to get to the level of play. This story of waste is also, you know, building this house. You you said, you know, you had to design it carefully. No, it, it was all play. And no architect. Right. You, it, it, it comes out. It comes out of you. The thing calls for it. You have a, a, a ceramic piece that has been mm. thrown away. Uh, you, you stick it in the wall, you know, where it feels right. And that piece comes back to life because mm -hmm. it has been given life and wasn't thrown in the landfill mm. because those dumb things are happening everywhere even here in in the Oroville <laughs> where people are a little bit arrogant about their situation and and it, but they still do dumb things like throw the stuff into landfill like mm. pottery waste you have all these potteries here people making their beautiful creations well you know how that works in a kiln uh, half the stuff blows up or, you know, doesn't come out the way the artist wants it. So you have a, mm. a, 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 an enormous amount of pottery waste. And that was all going into landfill because mm -hmm. they couldn't put it on the road because it was punctured the tires because it's mm -hmm. stoneware and it's very hard and sharp.
I was listening to that for you. If you learned from or were moved by the episode, pay it forward. Go to Apple now and leave a five-star review so others can benefit. Join the Institute for Aliveness for a one-week transformational fasting experience. Consider getting an astrology reading from Andy or enroll in the one-year health coach certification course. Whatever you do, don't let this learning pass you by. Do something now to impact your lifestyle for good. Here we are again.